This section looks at HTTP headers. We'll do some concept first and then see how to use them with HTTP client. Headers are extra information that you include as part of a message. They apply in both directions, in the request and in the response. And in both of those cases, in, the, in the re both the request and the response, you might have content associated with those messages. And headers can apply to the content as well. For example, the accept header is something that you might use with a request. You might be contacting a REST server and asking for a serialized version of some object in its database. In that case, you could say, please send me the object serialized in JSON format or in XML format. Here's one that applies to responses. So when you, you make a request, the server might be down for maintenance or something. It can include this, this in the response saying, not available right now, try again later. And just one more here, content length. This is one that applies to the body. So this could get used both in the request and in the response. There's a lot of HTTP headers out there. In fact, system.net has an entire namespace dedicated to types that help you use headers with HTTP client. And we'll do a quick survey of some of the types that are in there. Headers show up in several places. When you create and send off a request, inside that object is a headers collection. When you get back a response, it also has a headers collection. When you work with content, it has a headers collection. Generally, the type of headers that you put in each of those three collections will be different. That's not 100% true. There's, there's a few that get used in more than one place. But generally, these are disjoint sets of headers. So for a request, there's the actual type that the headers property is, is based on. And, and notice how many headers there are there. Here's the type of the headers property from the response. And here's the one from content. So I guess the first thing to notice here is the property name in the request, response, and content, in all three of those classes, the name of the property is headers. But the underlying type is different in each case because the headers that you use in each case tend to be different. There are named properties for most of the common HTTP headers. HTTP lets you use custom headers. So there's also an inherited add method from the base class there, HTTP headers, so you can do any header that you need, not just the ones that have named properties. Again, most of the headers here are disjoint, so the, the, set, the set of types used for a request is generally not the same as those used for a response. There's a few things that overlap, so there's three examples, and if you stare at this long enough, you'll probably see a few more that, that appear in more than one collection. If you drill down a little bit further and look at some of these properties, some of the headers have a dedicated class for their value type. So for example, the cache control header has an entire class whose only purpose is to create a value appropriate for that property. And, and this kind of explains why we have a whole namespace dedicated to headers and, and working with headers with HTTP client. That's not universally true. So, some of the header properties use a generic type. For example, those three all use that class as their value type. Some headers use the simple types, like this one uses date time. There's others that use bool. So we've seen all the concepts. Let's look at a few examples to finish this off. First one is use the accept header in a request. So we're gonna send off an, a request. We create a request message object. Then we create the value. So we're using the dedicated class that's appropriate for the header that we, we're concerned with. In this case, it's media type with quality header value. There's one constructor that just takes a string and you pass in something like application slash JSON. There's another constructor that takes that string and a double, and, and the double would be the quality value. Your request object has a headers collection. There is a dedicated property for the accept header, and we add this value into the accept collection. When we run this query, hopefully then we'll get back JSON as the result. If we wanted to use XML, it's basically the same thing, just a different string there. Next, let's do a header that doesn't have a named property in the headers collection. So in this case, we're still gonna work with the request message object. But instead of going for a property there, we just go to the headers collection and call the inherited add method. So, so in this case, we're doing the non-standard header do not track. It's possible to use the add method for headers where they do have a dedicated property. For example, here's the traditional way to do the accept header. 
Here's the shorthand using the add method. So th this has some pros and cons. The, the, on the benefit side, obviously, it's shorter. But uh, on the other hand, you don't get an opportunity to set the quality value. If you wanted to use the constructor there, that takes a string and a double. And you also don't get IntelliSense when you're typing the word accept right there. So, so it's a little bit more error prone. But generally, it comes down to personal preference. And finally, let's look at how you sometimes get repeated code when you're setting headers and how to eliminate it. Here we're using the same HTTP client object to send more than one request. In both cases, we want JSON back as our result format, so we add the accept header to both of the requests. This means we end up with repeated code. So instead of using the headers collection that are part of the request, there's a, a headers collection that lives on the HTTP client object itself. It's called default request headers. Anything you put in here gets sent with every request for which you use this client. So it's a convenient shorthand, a convenient way of eliminating repeated code if you're continuously reusing the same client object.